I'm Kira, and this is Ben and Jerry's, and also Uppsala Aida. Synthetic biology is the scientific frontier of our generation. It's the next big thing, the internet. And ben and Jerry's with the melted core inside. It's to the 2010s what microbiology was to the 60s, or what computing was to the 90s. And yet, a lot of people have no idea what it actually is. Synthetic biology can be described as a crossover between engineering and biology. Is it confusing? Well, let me put it this way. You and I and plants and kittens are all made up of cells that contain DNA. This genetic blueprint, in turn, is made up of A's, C's, T's, and G's. Much like the hard binary code of your computer is made up of ones and zeros. You know, like in the Matrix. This code makes up programs or genes that tells the computer or the cell what to do and how to function. What we strive to do in synthetic biology is to write our own programs in this code and thus create cells that do and function as we want. We can make bacteria that absorb toxic waste or oil spills from our ocean, or better yet, the carbon dioxide from our air. We can make bacteria that synthesize medicines that are difficult to grow or expensive to produce. We can make bacteria that produce palm oil or plastic or rubber or other materials that cause deforestations of the earth. There actually is a malaria drug on the market right now that was produced through synthetic biology. The World Health Organization estimates that 627,000 people die from malaria every year and 90% of these deaths occur in Africa. However, Scientists at Berkeley have aspired to make an already existing malaria drug synthetically in cells in order to make it cheaper and thus more accessible for those 200 million malaria sufferers in poor countries. Another application of synthetic biology is, and hold on to your hats. Glow in the dark plants! Remember back in 2010 when we all went to see that movie Avatar with the blue people and the forest that glue in the dark and how sad we all were that our trees didn't twinkle in the starlight? Enter synthetic biology. Scientists Anthony Evans and Dr. Kyle Taylor have turned this sci-fi into reality by taking the genes from fireflies and luminescent bacteria and putting it into the chloroplasts of plants. Glow in the dark plants! This endeavor was actually inspired by an iGEM project from Cambridge in 2012 where they made bacteria that glue so brightly but you could read your Harry Potter in that light alone. Glow in the dark plants! Apart from being fantastically awesome, these plants also provide an immense potential for clean and energy efficient and cheap luminosity that could potentially light up our streets as well as our homes. Synthetic biology is a very new and unexplored area of science with so much promise and it's already helping us solve the great threats and challenges of our generation. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm really looking forward to those glowing the dark trees. <laughs>